Okay, let's go through this moment's exam question. A non-uniform rod AB of mass M and length 5D rests horizontally in equilibrium on two supports at C and D. Those are the supports. The centre of mass of the rod is at the point G. Now, because it's non-uniform, that's why the centre of mass is not in the middle. It's displaced, displaced to the side. Now, a particle of mass 5 over 2 m is placed on the rod B. So, it will be placed here. And the rod is on the point of dip, tipping about D. Show that GD equals 5 over 2 B. So, let's just use this diagram here. Let's label what we can. So that at B is the mass 5 over 2 and it's going to have a G there. Now it does say M so it's 5 over 2 MG. Now G, does it say G has a mass, the centre of mass of the rod? So we just know that is something called MG. Now show that GD equals 5 over 2D. So let's take moments about D. So let's take moments about D. We have this. And we know that is going to be MG. And called GD, which is the length here. Is going to equal this moment here which is going to be D because you can see this distance here D times 5 over 2 M G so if we divide out by M G now we know this is going to equal because it's at the point of tipping so we're going to get G D the length GD equals 5 over 2D. So if you're not sure why we get this and this, remember this DG, if it was going round the clock, it was going round this way, that's going anti-clockwise. And this moment this way is going clockwise. So we've got the clockwise movement, moment equaling the anti-clockwise moment. That's why those two equal, and that's how we can resolve like that. So let's have a look at part B. There's a particle. It's moved from B to the midpoint of the rod. So that's just moved exactly here. That's the particle. And the rod still remains at equilibrium. Find the magnitude of the normal reaction between the support at D and the rod. So we're finding this, N. Now it's in equilibrium, so the anti-clockwise movement is going to equal the clockwise movement. Now if you remember, if this is D, and that is D, and the whole length is 5D, from here to here must be 3D. We don't know what that distance D stands for, but it doesn't matter. Now, we can take, because we know GD here from part A was 5 over 2D, which is the same as 2.5D, we know this distance here must be 0.5D. So using this information, we can take moments about C to help us with D. So let's get the clockwise movements and anti-clockwise movements. Which one is anti-clockwise? Well, you can see it is the moment from C and a normal reaction, because that will be going anti-clockwise. So that's going to be this length from C, 3D N. Now let's do the clockwise moments. We've got C to G. which is 0.5D and it's got a weight M 
So that must be MG here. Now it's plus, we've got this weight B or particle B that's moved to the midpoint. So if this is 3D, the midpoint of that is going to be 1.5D. So it's going to be plus 1.5D. 5 over 2 mg. There is a times there, but I put it together. Now, can you see these are all like terms? Now, if we multiply this out and combine them, that's going to make 17 over 4 mgd, which equals 3dn. And we're trying to find this normal reaction here. So we divide out by 3d. You can see that n will equal 17 over 12 m g and that will be the answer for 5 out of 5 marks ok let's look at this 7 mark moments question now you, you've got a beam AB has length 6 meters and weight 200 newtons now we're modeling the beam as a uniform rod so the 200 newtons will be in the center. So that will be exactly three meters in because the whole beam is six meters. AC equals one meter, DB equals one meter. And you have the support C and D. Now two children, Sophie and Tom, each have weight 500 newtons, stand on a beam with Sophie standing twice as far from the end of B, this is the end B here, as Tom. The B remains horizontal and in equilibrium, so we can take moments. And the magnitude of the reaction of D is three times the magnitude of the reaction at C. So by modeling the beam as a uniform rod and the two children's particles, find how far Tom is standing from the end B. So there's a couple of things we have to resolve here. First, let's Fine, Tom. Now that's 500 newtons, so we do not need to worry about mg. And Sophie's 500 newtons. Now the reaction at D is three times the magnitude of the reaction at C. So label this a letter that you can relate to. So I'm going to write 3R. That's the moment at D, or the reaction at D, you know what I mean? And C is just going to be R. So if we're just doing a normal reaction, the upwards versus downwards, we can see that 500 add 500 add the weight of the rod 200's got to equal for uh, the combined reaction. Okay, so for R, you can see equals 1200. So R must equal 300. That's step one. Now, you can see I'm talking about the distance here, I've labelled it already. Um, Sophie's standing twice as far from B as Tom. So we're gonna label this distance X because that's what we're gonna look for. So if we have to take moments, think what's a good letter to take moments from. Now I'm gonna show you how I got this working out right here. Now it would make sense for us to resolve from B. Now you can resolve from anywhere, but because if you want to find X, it makes sense to resolve from B. So if we look at from B, we have Tom here, and Tom's distance is x and 500 newtons. So we have 500x plus, now why do we get 3 meters, 3 times 200 here? Well this is 1 meter, and 
from here to here has to be 2 meters because the point C to D must be 4 based on the whole length of this being 6. So that's 3 times 200. Now you can see this is all resolving anti-clockwise. So that's that next one. Now we have to include Sophie. That's why diagram is very important. Sophie is 2x away in total from B. So that's why we get 2x times 500. Now if we resolve horizontally, not horizontally, but clockwise, this is going clockwise from B, we have 1 times 3R to get 3R. That's the normal reaction here. And from this one R, we have B times 5R because we've got the 1 here, add the 4 from here. That's 4 meters. So that's 5R. So 3R add 5R equals 8R. We know R equals 300. So all this is going to equal 2400. So what we get here, if we multiply this out and this out, we're going to get 500x plus 1000x plus 600 is going to give us that 2400. Now let's solve that, it's minus 600 from both sides. So we're going to get 1,800 equals 1,500x. Now we divide out by uh, 1,500. We're going to get x equals 1.2. And in the context of this question, it has to be 1.2 meters. So from here to here, that's 1.2 meters where Tom is. And that's a seven mark question completed. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, when you look at these questions, do read it twice. So I've highlighted some keywords. The length is three meters. They've given you figure two here and a weight W newtons. Hence, you extend this diagram. I'm gonna write an extra W here. The length here you can see is three meters. Now, you know, the weight's in the middle because of this highlighted word, the uniform rod. You've got a load of weight 20 newtons, so no need for mg, and that's at the end here, which is B. And remember this point is C here, this point is A. So do draw a diagram to help you, and you're going to have tension, which works this way. Now we've got to show that the tension in a rope is this in newtons. So we take uh, moments about A which will make sense. So let's see what have we got clockwise. This is clockwise and this bit is clockwise from A. Can you see this is going to take it clockwise, this is going to drag it clockwise. Now the distance here is zero, so we don't need to include that because zero times anything is zero. But we've also got this one here that is clockwise. That's going to take that this way. So first thing we've got is 1.5 W, the clockwise moment, plus 20. This is a 20. And what's the distance from A? 3 meters. That's 20 times 3 equals this is the anti-clockwise so it's got to equal that because it's in equilibrium so we know that is 1.8 that's going to equal 1.8 y nice so if we divide out by 1.8, you're going to get y equals 5 over 6 w plus 
that's 100 and over 3 and then you've done that quite easily done and those are all your uh, method marks earned with the diagram part b find in terms of w the tension in the rope attached to the pole at a so we want this one so where would it make sense to take moments well first thing let's resolve up and down so part b i'm going to write here we're going to know x plus y this and this is going to equal everything acting downwards so what's acting downwards is just w which is in the middle here w and the 20 added here which you can see so x plus y equals w plus 20 now you know what y is from here so x equals sorry not x equals x plus 5 over 6 w plus 103 equals w plus 20 hopefully that should make sense so if you resolve that because we want to know what x is we minus the 5 over 6 w from both sides So we're going to get left with x equals 1 over 6w plus the 20 and we're going to minus this 103 as well together 100 over 3 minus 100 over 3 which is going to this say fine in terms of w so we're just going to leave that as x equals 1 over 6w minus 40 over 3 and that is perfect now for part C given that the tension in the rope attached to the pole at C is 8 times the tension in the rope attached to the pole at A find out the value of W so essentially they're saying So what are they saying here? That that is going to be 8t and that will be t. But what do we already have? We have y here, which is this, and we have found x here. So we just need to write 5 over 6w plus 100 over 3 is going to be 8 times x so that's going to be 8 1 over 6 w minus 40 over 3 and we're just going to solve that by expanding and solving and you will just get w equals 280 once you expand it out and solve for w